So I'm gonna try this one. Dialing Kluge, connected to Kluge. Whoa, what is happening? <laughs> I got intrigued by this tweet uh, from our friend Joshua Stein a week ago. He posted about a project he's been working on a Wi-Fi module for the Sidco mail station. So I read this with uh, great um, interest and uh, didn't know what the Sidco mail station was. It turns out uh, it is a email terminal uh, that uses dial-up modem that was made back in the late 90s, 1999, before uh, many of you were even using computers, probably. Uh, and it, it let people type emails and uh, can pose emails and read emails and then connect a phone line and dial up and send and receive and, and do all that stuff. And that in and of itself is, is kind of fun. But uh, what I thought was really fun was the level of um, hacking that uh, some people have taken to, 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 to hack on this thing, to make it do other stuff. It's a Z80 processor uh, and you know that powers a lot of other devices uh, from history and, uh, you know, the assembly language for it is well known and well documented. Um, and people are hacking for it and writing software and Joshua has taken it a step further. He's actually made hardware for it. So this allows the mail station to connect to Wi-Fi and do more than just connecting over a modem, which, uh, brings it in to, uh, our, our century and our decade and lets us do some really cool stuff with it. So he designed this PCB and this kit and I ordered one. And so the following is just a short video of me throwing it together and trying to make it work and uh, trying to get online with it. So enjoy. Hey, I got my mail station package from my cyber pal, Joshua Stein. So we're gonna open it up and see what he sent me. Oh, okay, look at that. Got a card from uh, Joshua that says, Hello, CyberPal. Thanks for buying a Wi-Fi station for the latest documentation. Go here. Wow, very professional. I like it. And I've got a nice little bubble-wrapped package here. Ooh, very cool. This is the 3D printed case which looks really nice. Um, I think that fits together somehow, but then here's the feather, which uh, does Wi-Fi. Oh, that is so cool. Thank you, Joshua, for sending that. That is so cool. I'm excited. I can't wait to put this together. I don't have time right now, but um, I'm going to be working on this very, very soon. So let's just put all of this to the side. I did also get my mail station from eBay, which is obviously uh, an open box item. So not really much in way of unboxing here, but I will open it up and show you what it looks like inside. Uh, hopefully it got the right model. I was, I was a little bit confused about the model numbering because on eBay it said, uh, I think it was M100 or something but on the device itself, it says DET1A. Uh, so hopefully this will work. I, if not, I can get another one. They're not that expensive on eBay, um, but, uh, oh, I don't have batteries in it, but it does power up if you plug in the power cord uh, that comes with it. So that's cool. It actually came with a, a phone wire uh, uh, for the modem, which I will not be using obviously, but, um, yeah, and then uh, I guess whatever we're building, the Wi-Fi station will plug in right here to the parallel port and presumably allow us to connect this thing to uh, the Wi-Fi, which is just amazing. I can't wait to get started on this. Uh, we'll be working on that next.
Okay, so I verified I have all these parts and uh, Joshua gave us a parts list here. It looks like everything is present. So in step two, solder the resistor array. What he wants us to do is find the gray dot on this. I don't know if we can see this on camera, but there's a gray dot right there and it needs to be uh, soldered where the X is right here. Now it's hard to see, but there is a tiny X on the leftmost side there. You'll just have to trust me. So I'm gonna put this in here and I don't have any helping hands. Uh, Joshua talks about using um, the helping hands to hold it, but I do have some vice grips and I'm just going to clip this on here and hope that I can get it to hold this in such a way that I don't have to worry about it too much. So I got this right like that. Turn on the soldering station here, and I guess I need to turn this on. It's been a while since I've used this. Uh, looks like it was already set at 350. That's perfect. Mmm, smells good. Smells like dust burning off of my rarely used soldering iron. So don't laugh, I'm pretty bad at soldering. Well, you can really see how dirty my uh, pad is here. So I'm just gonna glob some solder on here and hopefully I can get it to go onto there. I need some more solder than that. Oh, look at that, look what I did. Well, that's just beautiful. And what is it focusing on, my hand? It's focusing on my hand. Okay, so I got one pin uh, soldered here, so maybe I can flip it like this. You know what I forgot to do? I totally forgot to plug in my little suckering, sucking fan. Did I plug it in? Let's see. Maybe I did. I just didn't turn it on. Oh, it's loud. It's loud. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. I was getting some fumes. This is so bad. Okay, I think I did okay on most of them. I, definitely not great, but I think I could probably just clean these up by heating them up a little bit, making sure none of them are touching. Um, the only one that's pretty bad is these first two ones that I did, and I think I can just get some of that off. Don't touch. Please don't touch. No touchy. Well, um, definitely not the best solder job, but I don't think any of them are touching, and I think that is the most important part. Okay, so on to the next step. Step three, the socket. Okay, so we're going to put it like this. We're going to grab this socket. It has a small indentation on one side, which should line up with the indentation printed on the board. Okay, so it has an indentation right there, and that will go here. Okay. Um, and then we get to solder that as well. Perfect. Okay. Need you to stay in place. Hmm. I need you to stay in place. I need you to be like this. Okay, I got some better lighting, so maybe it'll be easier to see. But well, let's just see what we can do here. Let's do the opposite corner. Yeah, opposite corner. Let's use some logic. Come on, get on there. Okay, and I'm just going to push from the other side, make sure everything's lined up. And now, I think I can put this on its back and do the same thing again. Just go down the row here. I got some solder on every one of them and it looks like junk. So I'm just going to heat every one of them up and hopefully it will straighten them up a little bit. Except for that, of course. That's stuck together.
I'm gonna get so many comments about how bad my soldering is. Ooh, I think I'm getting better. Look at those. This is pretty good. I don't think any of them are touching. I'm trying to get a good angle here. I mean, yes, I know the solder is bad. I know this solder job is horrible. Each of them has a different amount of solder on it. But if it's making electrical contact, I think that's all that matters. At least for me. It looks, it looks okay. Uh, I'd definitely say below average, but possibly acceptable. Okay, so now we've got a socket and we've got our, our array of resistors. And let's see what the next step is. Pin headers. Okay, this, oh, did I do this? Um, yeah. Shows the DB25 connector already soldered, but I recommend doing the pin headers first. The pin headers first. Okay, so that's these things. And looks like one goes here and one goes. Uh, that is not the same length. That's not the same length, Joshua. There's two extra holes. What am I supposed to do with that? Put it in the middle? How many holes does he have here? One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <gasps> Joshua, what have you done to me, sir? Oh, look, this got damaged. I think that was my fault. I think I did something bad. I must have smashed it somehow. I didn't mean to. I hope I can bend this without breaking it. I don't have any good tweezers, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to try to bend this back without breaking it. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be tricky. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Okay, I will have to go find a header. I don't know if I have any. Uh, I'll have to go find a 12-pin header. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That is definitely 10. So I have two problems. This is too short. This is only a 10 pin header. I'll have to go dig out something else. I assume this is 16 because it fits in there. Perfect. Um, and then the other problem, of course, is that my, what do you call this? DB25 is all bent up. And that is my fault completely. I did something stupid. It's a possibility I can get that one pin back if I had some tweezers. So I'll go work on that. Okay, I did not find um, any headers, but I clipped some wires off of an LED and I'm just going to try to make this work. And it's going to be um, a kludge, <laughs> but I really just want this thing to do its thing. Let's get some solder on this and try to stand it up straight. Let's get some solder on there first. Get it on there. And then let's do another one right next to it. Oh, it needs to go the other way, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay, that's fine. We'll just heat this up, this up, and push it through. Don't touch the iron, that's gonna be hot. Ow! Okay, that could work. I think I could bend that over. Yeah. Yes, 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 we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. So let's put this header here and let's solder it on. Okay, so we got a 10 pin header and a couple extra wires. <laughs> what can you do? Okay. Well, that was a big blob. Okay, well, I got, looks like plenty of solder on here now. Now I can just, um, tidy it up a little bit. Come on, separate. Separate. There we go. That was a big glob. Look at that, baby. It won't even melt. And I'm so bad at soldering. But only one way to get better. Only one way to get better is to practice. Okay. 
So now we're gonna do the DB5 connector and I was able to, I was able to bend the pins back mostly into place. This one's a little off right here, but I think I can get it in there. So we're gonna put this on here and hopefully I can get all of those to line up. This will be tricky. Come on. I think this is how I bent them in the first place. I was pushing on this too hard and something wasn't lined up. And I think it's just the outside deals. Aha! Hee hee hee! Ha ha! Got it. Okay, it's in there. Now I just get to solder this. I'm running out of the little little solder, this is all I have with this small stuff, but I have this big honking thing here that I think I'll use for these big holes. Come on. Come on. It says you don't have to fill the entire hole. And that stuff is globby. I might have to get a hotter iron for this. Come on, let go, let it go. I just want it to hold out, that's hot. Maybe this just isn't the right solder for this. Okay, hey, I'm happy with that. Look at that, that's actually a good, good uh, smooth surface. Let's do the other side. That is solid. Now let's use our little solder to do these little pins. I don't want to speak too soon, but this is actually better. I think I'm getting better as I go, maybe. Okay, so let's clean these up. This one's the worst. There we go. Yes. Okay. I don't think any of them are touching. It's ugly as sin, but it will probably work. Okay, with the exception of those two wires, I believe everything looks pretty good. Um, that That's obviously a mess, but we're gonna make it work. Clean the board optional. I don't have any flux remover. Um, I didn't really use much uh, flux, so it might be okay. Um, install the MCP. Okay, that is this dude here. MCP. Um, install the MCP while verifying that its indentation matches up with indentation on the socket. Okay, so the, the writing should be upright. And it should go in here. Like this. So, make sure I've got all the pins in there. Certainly don't want to break any pins. That really goes in there, doesn't it? Okay, sockets lined up. It's in there solid. Good. Verify the old pins made it into socket correctly. Looks like it soldered the Huzza module pins. Depending on which Huzza module you receive, the pins may already be soldered on from Adafruit or you'll have to solder them on yourself. Well, I guess we get to solder them on ourselves. These two will go here. I'm cheating a little bit using some wires. As long as they're not touching, I think it's okay. So it's gonna go like this. So I need to solder these pins onto here, but not that many. We are going to do 10 on this one. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And I believe I can get rid of these. So now we have 10 that will go in here. Actually, it'll go like this. And so I need to solder that on Okay. That looks straight. Looks straight. Let's try to make sure none of these are touching. Okay. Well, that's that. Oh, look at that, baby. Now we'll do the other side. Come on, let go. 
Okay. Whew. Okay, this might be it. This might be the trickiest part, is getting these two wires soldered. Thread these through here. And push this down onto this, onto the headers. There we go. Got it. Okay, now we just need to solder those two. It's hard to see, but I think, I think we're good. You know what? I should have clipped those. Hmm. I'm going to have to find some way to clip them because I don't have anything small to do it with. Break them, bend them, break them. Yeah, that works. Well, I'm going to call that good. And uh, there it is. And... I think I can turn off my fan now and let's you know probably shouldn't put this together before I test it but I'd really just gotta see I gotta see how this works in the case oh that's that's almost perfect can I get it to go in a little more or am I am I stuck like this now oh hoo, 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 look at that Where's the other piece? Definitely should not be putting this together right now. Um, something's just not quite lined up, I think. Maybe I just don't have that in far enough. Something's... oh, maybe this is not low enough? What did I do wrong here? I wonder if... Oh, look at that. Yes. That is sticking down quite a bit, that piece of wire. Just going to bend it over and see if it will break off or, you know, maybe it's fine just bent over. Oh yeah, that fits way better now. Ho oh, ho 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 Look, it's a little case. It's a little case. Well, uh, now we get to see if this works. Okay, I got the mail station out. This was the whole point of this project was to try to get this thing connected to the Wi-Fi thanks to Joshua's little project. And uh, I haven't really messed with this since I got it. Um, clearly someone didn't wipe their uh, information from here. Settings, that's it. It's the only options you have. Okay, there's probably something, some reset button, perhaps. Oh, there is a reset button right there. And let's just turn on the power while holding it down. And maybe one of those will have done it. So it says scanning memory, reset system data, um, clear all data. Yes. Well, that didn't do it. clearly still has their information on it. Clear all data. You would think that would be it. Is there anything in the address book? Well, it did clear that. I guess maybe this is the only thing that doesn't clear. It looks like it cleared everything else. I'll just put my own info in there. I'll just say Tim Morgan, dial-up number, don't care, email address. I can't change the email address. I can't change the email address. Well, I'll have to look at that because um, I'm not going to go as Dale and Sherry, that's for sure. The service has long since uh, been discontinued, so I don't think I'm doxing anyone here. Uh, that email address won't work. Let's go to the getting started guide. Plug in your Wi-Fi station into the printer port. Okay. Ooh. Connect to the USB serial device at 11, 
uh, let's see, 115,200 baud, standard 8N1 with some terminal like CU. Okay, so I need to connect my laptop to the USB port, which is right here. So I need a micro USB, let me find one of those. I'm gonna connect this to my laptop over here. And uh, which way does this go? I always get this backwards. Looks like the fat end on top. Okay, so we need to connect that like that. And then um, some terminal software like CU. Okay, never use CU. What is CU? Don't have it. Pac-Man S-Y-C-U. Don't have it, okay? Unfortunately, I couldn't get the um, serial uh, terminal to communicate to this thing. So let's plug this in and see if there are any lights. Don't seem to be any lights at all. Well, I'm not sure what I did wrong. Well, I do actually get three volts. Oops, turn my light back on. I do get three volts. Now that it's plugged into the USB, if I, um, if I touch ground and three volts, uh, I did I did it a second ago. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. You might just have to trust me, but it says 3.2 on the screen there. Uh, so it's getting power from the USB. There's no LEDs. Um, not sure if that's bad or not. Maybe I'll Google that. I mean, right there, there's an LED. That's powered from a separate thing. It doesn't make sense. I went over all the solder points and I made sure everything was oriented correctly from the instructions. It just doesn't light up. And I'm pretty sure from images online that that's an LED that's supposed to light up. So wait a second. Oh, I thought I saw, I thought I saw a light. Oh, I do. There's a light. This, this lit up for a second. Maybe there's a short, or maybe there's a loose connection that when I push hard, oh, it's on. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I can't tell if it's me moving it or if it's just lighting up. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it in real fast and let go. It's not lighting up. So I think it was something I was doing, but I saw a light. It lights up when I first plug it in. Just for a split second. It's almost like it's uh, got a short and it's triggering some shutdown or something. The USB cable definitely had a different effect, but I don't know if it was just my angle perhaps, but it is lighting up. Every time I plug that in, it lights up for just a split second. I don't know if you can see that probably happens so fast. I don't think you can see it on camera, but trust me, that little CHG light lights up for a split second and then goes right off. Okay, so I think I got it working. Uh, I had to, I found this program, Mo Serial. It's a GUI program. Uh, it was a little more friendly and it does crash a lot, uh, unfortunately, but if I do this and go to port setup, Oh, look at that, USB zero. And then I changed this baud rate, eight N one, eight, one N, whatever. Uh, I had to change the handshake to software, which if you hover, it says RTS, CTS, handshake versus X on, X off handshake. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I did change it. And it might've been a coincidence, but changing it and, and then I'll uh, see all that's normal. And I think I went down here and hit enter and then I hit AT and it replied with OK. <laughs> it works. Uh, so another thing that helped was I actually read the troubleshooting and uh, Josh says, Joshua says that all LEDs on the Feather Huzzah will flash briefly upon connecting power. So that is actually normal behavior. I think everything was working right. Um, when I would plug this in, I'd see the light flash and I thought there was some electrical short somewhere, but that was not the case. It was doing everything it should be doing. Um, let's see, can I reconnect now that I've, yeah, it works perfect. So we'll plug this into the mail station. 
I'm not gonna put the case on right now because I just think that's bad uh, bad juju that bit me already um, I just want to make sure this still works there's no random shorts okay turn this around turn this on make sure this still works okay <laughs> just verifying every step along the way here uh, okay now let's go back to these instructions connect the wi-fi station to your wireless network with atssid followed by your network name okay so i'm going to paste that in and type morgan um, i wasn't going to cut this out of the video but you know it's not even that great of a password anyway so i'll probably just change it afterwards uh, but there there's my info for that. Type ATI enter and you should see Wi-Fi connected. ATI, ATI. Oh, <laughs> this is me doing a happy dance. Oh, it works. It's connected. It's got an IP address. Uh, gateway IP is correct. DNS server. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, next, to check for a new firmware update, type this, okay. Uh, well, I didn't like that. ATI update question mark? Well, let's just, uh, let's do it without the question mark. Error. Okay, interesting. Mine doesn't respond to that the same way. But maybe I don't care. AT HTTP equals one followed by enter. It says OK. Save your settings with AT and W. Enter. OK, it says to connect to a telnet host issue. Uh, don't think I need that right now. Installing WS Loader to get Z80 code programs running. Okay, we'll work on this part. WS Loader is the application loader, a small bootstrap program that is installed onto the mail station by hand and is used to receive data from Wi-Fi station and execute it. This is exciting. Whenever WS Loader is run, it waits for input on the printer port from the Wi-Fi station and then loads whatever it receives into RAM and executes it. It permanently stores programs instead. Oh, to permanently store. Programs use the flash loader. Okay. I think flash loader requires WS Loader. So I have to do this first. Okay, power. Okay, turn with the mail station off. Oh, okay. Turn it off. Hold down FN Shift T and press power. Okay, uh, I guess that's function shift T power to turn the unit on and let go of these keys once the diagnostic main menu appears. Enter the hidden hex viewer editor. Press shift in the rightmost unlabeled button under the screen. Okay, shift and this button. Wow! You should appear at the hex viewer. Press the G key and it will prompt for an address. Enter seven one zero three zero four, and then X, which will not appear. Then enter. This unlocks the ability to enter in a right editing mode. Wow, this is this is like real movie hacking. Uh, and then modify application count and locations. Press G again. Zero two zero zero. Oops. Zero, 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 and press enter. Okay. This page in flash memory determines how many applications are installed, which will appear in the Yahoo menu. We'll enable all five of them, the first byte, and set the start page of each to their standard addresses, even though there probably won't be five applications installed yet. This is just so you won't have to come back here later. Okay. Press the S key to switch to edit mode. Okay. S. Enter the following bytes. Okay, don't make a mistake. Don't make a mistake. Do I hit zero five? Okay. And then 
zero, zero. Um, and then I add some more zeros and then I do 18. What? It's a little offset, like it's like a pixel off and it's kind of weirding me out, but I think it's lined up. Um, zero, 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 one. Zero, 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 one, nine. And now we're on the next column. Zero, 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 two, zero, 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 one, A. Zero, 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 four, a bunch of zeros. Next line, two more zeros, one, C. When you're done, press S again to save your changes. Type in the Debian loader binary. Now that you've enabled all five application slots, you're going to manually type in the 100 or so hexadecimal bytes of the Debian loader binary into the fifth slot. Okay, press G and enter. <laughs> this is so fun. Uh, this really is like movie stuff for me. This is stuff I would see in a movie and go, people don't do that. Okay, press the S key to enter edit mode. Good luck. Joshua says, good luck. I am definitely going to need it. Okay, C, three. C9. Oh. Okay, when you're done, press S again. You can now press the back button and you'll be returned to the diagnostic main menu. Where is the back button? Here. Okay. Press Q to quit. Okay. Test over, it says. Press enter to not clear anything. Okay. At the main menu, arrow over to Yahoo and press enter. Oh, mine doesn't have Yahoo. And it's not in extras. Oh, look at this. <laughs> mine is just different. Mine, I did not see this right here. WS Loader. Okay, I need to find MS Term Bin. MS Term Bin, where are you? Aha, here's MS Term. I'm going to open that. Install SDCC. Pacman S1 SDCC. Is that a thing? Hopefully that's the <laughs> right one. <laughs> this is 4.1. Yeah, that, that must be it because that's 4.1. Um, okay, so we installed that. <clears throat> and. Um, we're gonna get clone uh, Joshua's direct uh, repo here, cdms term, and then make an object directory, and then we're gonna make lock equals ram, ram, to compile to run out of ram from loader, okay? Uh, missing separator. <laughs> Am I gonna have to install OpenBSD? Okay, so it looks like I can just hack this a little bit here, maybe like that, and then get rid of that. And I don't need to specify lock anymore. I can just run make. Please work. <laughs> I'm gonna open adders, ink, removing. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Okay. OpenBSD VM. Um, don't I have a VM for a uh, lib, uh, vert, vert manager? What is it? Yeah, virtual machine manager. Okay, fine, Joshua. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Just launch OpenBSD. Uh, make sure I have this. And um, create a object directory run make lock equals ram oh i probably need to install sdcc okay so uh do as package add uh sdcc ah 
380. It's a little bit old. I think I'm on an older older version of OpenBSD, so that's okay. Okay, so let's try this make again. Ooh, that's much better. <clears throat> much, much better. Okay, well look at that. And what's an object? Do we have msterm.bin? 192.168.10.107. It's not responding at all. Why not? Can I ping it? Probably not, but it's worth a shot. 192.168.10.107. Oh, I can ping it. Okay. Cool, cool. 10.107. Do not do HTTPS, you evil, evil. Ah, that was it. Okay. Um, so I can upload from here, possibly, Tim. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter here, and hopefully that's going. I'm going to hit upload. And what's, what's going to happen? Successfully uploaded. <laughs> what? What can I do with this? This is so cool. Now what do I do with it? Um, what have we accomplished? Well, we put a program on this mail station over a device that we soldered together ourselves, kludged together. Um, with my bad soldering, uh, wrote some hex code into memory to get a loader program. I, I just, I'm, I'm in shock. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to try this. A T D T K L U D dot. I don't have a telnet host that I ever use. So I'm going to try this one. Dialing kludge connected to kludge. Whoa, what is happening? <laughs> Visitors may log in as guest. <clears throat> oh, this is so amazing. I don't know why this is so cool. This is terminal support code page. Um, I don't know, does it? <laughs> does it? I'm gonna say probably no. Um, we'll just say no. Does this terminal support color? No. Disabling ANSI color, terminal size, 64 by 15. Yes, thank you very much. Welcome guest, you're the fifth caller today. <laughs> this is so awesome. Message boards, multi-user chat. <clears throat> Sign up for an account. Oh, I'm gonna have so much fun playing with this. Let's, uh, yeah, let's sign up for an account. Create an account, create an account. You'll need to pick a username, password, optionally supply an email address. Seventh caller today. <laughs> um, message boards, general. Let's just go to general. What are you connecting from? Oh, this is the one. This is the one. I'm replying to this. Okay, how do I reply? Um, what's that say? Oh, R for reply, okay. Put an exclamation point on there and a happy face. And control D when finished. Okay, caps lock is control. So control D, post reply, edit again, P for post. Okay. There it is. There's my message. Okay, I'm happy.
this is it. That's that's all I wanted to do right there. Is uh, connect. I, this is better than I could have hoped for. This is absolutely fantastic. Okay, goodbye. Thanks, foe. <laughs> Thanks, foe. No carrier.